While your phone calls may for the moment be safe and sound without the ear of the government listening in, look skyward. Pay close attention to a very different type of surveillance. Look then to another set of those wonderfully meaningless numbers when it comes to the 2016 presidential race and why there are those of you out there who no matter what will vote for Hillary Clinton. And then there's this tiny little story about a former Olympic gold medalist who has decided time has come to conquer a very different set of hurdles and what it says about most media and their obsession with changes. All that and the long arm of American law catches up to one of the most powerful men in world sport. Fear not, we shoot, we score. I'm Ed Berliner and this is The Hard Line. This is a significant weakening of the tools that were put in place in the wake of 9-11 to protect the country. 60% of the Americans are in favor of the bulk data collection program. So I think Congress is misreading the public mood if they think that Americans are concerned the, the privacy implications of this. Let me say again, as other speakers have said repeatedly, nobody's listening to your phone calls. In Iraq, right now, we have the right strategy. A combination of coalition airstrikes, training, equipping, assisting, and effective local partners. That is the winning strategy. It's not clear what has finally changed Sepp Blatter's mind. All I can say is that I'm very pleased that he has done so and has accepted what has been obvious to us for a long time, which is that his credibility as leader of FIFA is utterly destroyed. Now that the Senate has blown through the deadline that they have been aware of for more than a year and a half, that they should vote to pass the bill in its current form, in the form that already passed the United States House of Representatives with the support of 338 Democrats and Republicans. Uh, if they will pass that piece of legislation, the President will quickly sign it into law. Just when the criminal element and those seeking to keep those calls to a clandestine dealer away from prying ears thought they were being freed from the American government's ever watchful gaze, Guess again, because an Associated Press review has found the skies are dotted with planes operated by dummy companies and actually flying missions for the FBI, which of course means tin hats for everyone. All right, let's get to the bottom of this and a whole lot more. He is a constitutional attorney, president of the Rutherford Institute and author of Battlefield America, John Whitehead. Joined by the former chief U.S. attorney for New York and author of Faithless Execution, Andrew McCarthy. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, let's get to work. And, John, I'm going to come to you first because here we have the FBI operating planes. I mean, this isn't really anything new with all sorts of technology. However, I do recall that in your book, Battlefield America, you use the phrase techno-tyranny. So I would guess that this is something that doesn't sit well with you. No, it's uh, obviously surveillance, but uh, you have to get ready for this. I mean, drones are going to be flying over the United States soon. They're going to have scanning devices, facial recognition software from 20,000 feet. I mean... In the age in which we live, we have to realize this, technology is moving so very, very rapidly, and many of the large corporations like Google, uh, Amazon building a $600 million uh, intelligence cloud for all the intelligence agencies, uh, virtually there's going to be very difficult to have a lot of privacy. There's going to be privacy in some instances, but in my opinion, in the cases I've seen, and I actually work on actual cases with whistleblowers and people who have been under surveillance, and I might want to get into a few of those if we can, uh, we're being watched everywhere. Your emails, your text messages. Actually, I see the cases, and, and I'm a, I'm really alarmed by what I'm seeing happening. And I think that we need protection from it. I don't think Congress is doing a very good job. And I've been arguing for a long time that what we need out of a Congress is an electronic privacy bill of rights because. What we used to know as privacy, being secure in our homes, like the Fourth Amendment says, against uh, unwarranted invasions, uh, we're not going to have that anymore. And then with the militarized police and 80,000 SWAT team raids occurring across the United States on an annual basis, I mean, uh, we're in a hell of a mess, folks. And so I think we need some protection for Congress, but they seem so bumbling right now, it's hard <laughs> to find out what, in the, what they're doing. We've heard those words, bumbling in Congress, used in the same <laughs> sentence before. All right, Andrew, I'm going to get it to you now. Do we need protection from this? Because it would seem to be a logical step. The government has to basically protect its own citizens. And as I noted, this is not anything new. It's been going on for a long time. No, but I think... It, what you constantly hear here is the conflation of capabilities and actions. And I'm not for a moment suggesting that abuse 
just don't happen. There are roguish people in government just like there are every place else. But, you know, look, the FBI says, at least for now, that they're not using the aerial surveillance for routine investigations. It's a capability that they have to have uh, in the event of, uh, of critical incidents. And I quite agree that we need to have a body of law that keeps pace with technology, society's changing notions of, of what privacy is and what it wants to protect, a threat environment is. And I also agree that Congress has to do a lot better job of oversight. But I think very often we hear that government has capabilities and we assume that it's doing wrong. And by that logic, you know, uh, th there's no greater ability or, or uh, capability that the executive branch has than that, for example, President Obama is the commander-in-chief of the military. Now, in theory, he could order an American citizen, uh, American state to be uh, you know, invaded and occupied. Well, in and, theory, and but again, that's pretty much of a stretch of a theory. As, uh, under martial law. I don't think that that's going to happen. Okay, let me get this now. Uh, hold on one second here, because, John, I want to come back to you, because now we're talking again about what should the American people allow, what should the government do, what should all of these freedoms basically allow. We're talking now about the USA Freedom Act, and Rand Paul is the one who has said that the phone records of law-abiding Americans are none of the government's business. Well, wait a minute now. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Supreme Court 36 years ago found there is no constitutional right to privacy in phone records. So is he not incorrect, and is the Freedom Act something which he should stop stalling on? Well, it depends on the philosophy you have, you know. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go along with James Madison, who put our Bill of Rights together. He said, we ought to mistrust all those in power. And he was talking about the government. Uh, again, I've had lawsuits. I've filed lawsuits. I have whistleblowers in my office. I have a, I have a, mar a decorated Marine sitting in my office who did a three-sentence email about some military operations happening in this country in the mountains. The next day, two NSA agents are at his doorstep saying they're going to deal with him seriously. This is a decorated Marine, uh, and even in threatening to deport him. We write the NSA and say, what in the, what are you doing? What are you at this guy's doorstep for, for an email that doesn't give away any secrets or do anything? No response. We have veterans across the country contacting me, saying that they're doing text messages. They're getting uh, visits from the FBI the next day, saying they want to interview. They want a serious conversation about what these people are saying. Well, I understand that, John, but so let me get right to the point here, because I only have a couple of minutes left here. This is regarding the USA Freedom Act, because this specific act in itself, is it not fair to say that it does not go against, against constitutional law as it stands right now? And Rand Paul, as some should say, should not stall it. It should go into effect. Depends on your philosophy. Yeah, it doesn't go against current Supreme Court law, but people who believe in the Fourth Amendment, uh, in my opinion, it does bypass the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment is really clear. You don't do surveillance on American citizens unless you have some kind of evidence there up to wrongdoing. And here's the other thing. I've had, had former NSA agents tell me this, by the way. They said, we're, we're focusing on minors. We're, we're surveilling everybody. That's why uh, if you're going to get on a terrorist attack, it's going to get by because we're watching the wrong people. Do good police work follow some guidelines, give us an electronic privacy bill of rights. And, you know, I'm not supporting Rand Paul, but what I'm saying here is uh, our Congress is terribly failing us, and the U.S. Freedom Act is not going to solve the problem, in my opinion. Andrew, unfortunately, we have to avoid you for the moment, and I don't mean to say that for, a, for any other purpose other than the fact technically we're having problems with your, with your audio, so we're going to have to say thank you very much, Andrew. We're going to bring you in another time to make sure that we get you involved in this. Again, we apologize for the technical ease. John, let me just ask you one more question here. Again, getting right back to this Freedom Act, do we just need to pass something that keeps Americans safe? If that's going to keep Americans safe, but here's the thing, two independent studies show that all the NSA surveillance has not stopped a, sp a specific terrorist attack. And again, like I said, the former whistleblowers are telling me that by, by surveilling everybody, they fear we're going to get a terrorist attack because we're watching the wrong people. So follow the constitutional guidelines, focus, do good police work, and we might do the right job. But the way we're doing it right now, again, I don't think it's working, no. Would you agree, though, that there is just a little paranoia here? Oh, there's doubt. There's paranoia in government, and, there's, and the <laughs> citizens are paranoid, but they're reflecting with the government right now. That's because if the government's watching everybody, we live in a surveillance state. I think that's fair to say as well. There's paranoia just all around. I want to thank you very much for joining us, John. Also, Andrew McCarthy, thank you as well. John, we'll talk again soon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. When we come back, psych exams for commercial pilots. Are these necessary, or is it going too far? That's next when The Hardline continues.